No, if I get pregnant now, yeah, my fear is not even going to be about me. It's going to be more of the people I'm going to be disappointing, my parents and all of that. That's even worse when the father not with me. Yeah, it's just that I don't break me. The most disappointed face after all the work and all the effort he's putting into the life of his children. Man, disappointing. How is he going? Bele, do you know? How is he going Bele. to go out? I feel like sometimes we are too hard on our parents. No, they are, they are also parents. They're just doing this. They are winging it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sometimes like. When I look at the way our parents treat us, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yes. them. So, so my question was, if you get pregnant, right? So it says you're anti-abortion. Yeah, if you're pregnant, I'll do it. Yeah. People think I'm lying. What about you? Well, I hope you don't find it. Well, us. I'm not... <laughs> I don't think I have it in me to choose something that is... You know that's mm -hmm. mine that's like a life my, my child i don't think i do but my fear is not if i get pregnant now yeah my fear is not even going to be about me it's going to be more of the people i'm going to be disappointing my parents and all of that yeah. but if i'm to get pregnant and those factors are not there i don't think i'll even reason it too much i'll have a child mm -hmm. but the reason why terminating is might even cross my mind is because i wouldn't want to look in my father's face oh jesus christ to, to crush me Actually, but if it's that? just me it has happened, it has happened. Do you know the thing is, it's even worse when the father not with me. Yeah, it makes it things makes, it tougher. Makes, yeah, when the father of the child is actually not with me. I think that it's not The person is beginning to be dead. Yeah, it, it, it gives you, yeah. it makes you stronger. It the father yes. of the child is now. Because they'll be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, now, maybe you guys, knowing our African culture, they're like, ready. Yeah, they'll just, they might just like do a quick one for you people. So the person is beginning to be dead. Uh, the bronze will be as much as it should be. But the guy will just be there living his life and it's so sad man. <laughs> For me, I don't even like to think about it. <laughs> hey, subscribe. Being the only girl in the first time. Ah over a day. Break your father's heart. If I get pregnant, <laughs> I'll tell my mom is saying. <laughs> I will tell her. Then if I tell her, I mean I'll break the city. I don't even like thinking about it. That's why someone asks me that question. I'll be like, I don't think I'll ever put myself in situations. Then I'll be like, go for this if you're not in this situation. And I'll say, ah, hmm? I'll, I'll be scared of dying. Not even the abortion part now. I'll be scared of that if I'm going to go and leave to die, I will die. <laughs> I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like I'll never have to because but if I should have to, I feel yeah. like the first person I'll tell is my dad. Yeah, is my mom. Mm -hmm. Like I'm scared of my dad. I'll tell you this. I, no, I'm definitely after telling myself when it comes to the prayer, I feel like I will, I will tell my, my my mom yeah will be more accepting. She will cry, she will do all those things, but then she will say my father is the one that is definitely go, not going to be accepted. But then I have this habit of when I fuck up medio, yeah, I meet the person that will have it worse. Because once I've met that person, like I carry myself if there are three levels and to the heat, I carry myself to the person with the highest level of the heat. Because once I've, you know, cleared it with that person with the highest level of the heat, the remaining two. Uh -huh. That is, that is, I just report myself. For me, every, the relationship I have with my dad is extremely close. So it's like, I place him on a very high esteem. And then, I, one thing I do is that I usually go to my mom. Hmm? Once I've secured my mom, like she knows, but she will not be the one to deliver the message. I'll tell her to stay, like the corner. You get stay. She's going to be my protective zone. When I'm waiting, I'm with my father. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? You get? Oh, okay. If she's there, like the protective zone, and I'm going to grab him, even if he's anger, okay? I know that I have a protective zone, but his own anger is going to be so extreme because of the kind of relationship. Trust that. Yes. And blood, the thing that will break me the most is disappointed face. After all the work and all the effort he's putting into the life of his child, how is he it's going? To, how is he going better. to go out there? Thing, my dad, my dad likes to talk to about me. How is he going to talk about me? Like, what is he going I've to never say? I've gotten to the stage like my parents, like not my friends, my family members, that can talk about certain things. Is it what, I feel like we started talking like, about it once I got to a certain age. Bro, sometimes so teenage it's age, it's I was. That's so, like, I feel like it's because of how, how that puts it. We are four at home, and there are two people in four. So it's the way you oh, got yeah, you yeah, by yeah, yeah, the way the way you see them relate to your parents affects the way you relate to your parents. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Nobody in my family is like to the highest the person you can say talks the most is my elder brother and my mom. And in that talk, there's a limit. 
Do you understand? Yeah. Is it, if at all something so serious should happen in my life, the only person I can tell is Odisa. That's my junior brother, my last friend. I can tell Odisa. I can't even comfortably tell between. I can't tell my sister because she has that like, no, that's age, that age, instinct. Age that's that elder that sister so instinct. Like nine years, four years, five years, ten years. So you can't just go and say how about you? I don't care about it. Is what? <laughs> It, I just can't picture. I am honest. Oh, when actually. something, when some, I've never, you know, I've never even been in a situation that the highest you can say they are angry with me about me being alive and important. I've never done something so bad. Like I've never gotten in trouble. You know, do you know why? I, I feel like important. the reason why you feel that way is because see, the, the parents are tricky. Like sometimes you feel like I, I cannot have this kind of relationship with my friends. I feel like, but sometimes, yeah, maybe because you've not been put in a position, yeah, there are positions that you'll be put in that will actually bring you closer, mm-hmm. that will let Eva. you realize Eva. that. Eva. 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 Oh, me, I'm talking from watched... I'm talking from personal experience. Yeah, yeah there I'm are, going to give you there's an event that I never thought I would live through with my parents. Like I felt like my dad is going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. And my mom is never really going to talk it. to me again. Mm-hmm. I felt like it was over. But then after the storm, that was the first time I and my dad spoke. Like daughter, he was not just talk, talking like he listened to me, I listened to him. And ever since then, our relationship was completely altered. I feel like and now I, I feel about. like yeah, I can actually come initially give me like four years ago, yeah. Like I, I cannot tell my father, I would rather burn, I would rather I would hang myself and stuff. But after this year. I actually knew that as much as he is like this, yeah, he will be like this, he will be like this, but he will be my father first. Yes, definitely. Not that your yeah. parents will never actually turn their back on. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, yeah. I, I, felt, this I felt this particular storm, and it was primary school. Primary school was when I actually felt the most storm I've ever felt in my life. Because I was so not just disappointed in the situation, but I was disappointed in my parents. Because I was, it's, it's, it's like the mentality I had now, if I had it then, I'm pretty sure I would have yelled at my parents. It was a situation of you believe a stranger over your own child. Yeah. You like get it? It's a situation knows. where, and this stranger is somebody you are having issues with. Like my mom was having issues with this stranger. So this stranger now used that uh, particular situation that she put me in to mend her own issues with my mom. It's like putting me into trouble, making you look like a good person. Why putting the child into trouble in the name of trying to protect the child? And then you as a parent, you are not believing the child. So it took years and years because constantly, even when I got into high school, my mom kept on reminding me of that event. And I kept on telling her that you guys never believe me until this day. I kept on saying that this never happened. But because this particular woman told you she saw it happen. And they feel like the other and they person. Feel like the elderly happened. person. So it took yeah. me until I was in SS2. I was going into SS2. My mom, because it's like every single time I come back and I'm going back to school, she keeps on reminding me, you're going back to school. Or you know that your school is mixed. So you have to, she will not remind me of that event. I will swallow it knowing that this was a freaking lie that was put in onto my head. And I suffered this lie. Like the entire compound knew about this thing. Because of how shaking he was, my my dad the had to come back me. from where he traveled from to come back because they told him that this happened, and I kept on screaming and crying that it never did happen until I got into SS2. That was the first time I actually confronted them. I got my dad. I sat him down. Just imagine a fifteen year old sitting the parents down. I sat them both down, and I spoke to them that in their life, I've experienced that trauma for years. But in their life, from now on, if I ever tell you that what I did is this, and you believe somebody else. That day, you go and take that person as your child. I told them to their face, you can't take them as your child. Because I know the, the trauma I experienced, I'm coming home, I'll be fidgeting that I cannot come to the, come back to the house where my parents actually believe. They actually believe this person. Oh, me. And it was just a very, a very weird, weird um, thing that they were placed into, like for my age and for the things I knew then. I could not imagine myself being told that I am I actually did this thing when I know I did this. So it was like very traumatic after that experience and actually getting the the morale to actually call them and sit them down. Actually talk to them and watch them apologize for something that has been happening over the years. It actually got me thinking that despite the ups and downs in life hmm, with your parents, no matter no matter the bad you do, even if you keep it in, and it's your parents. Even if you keep it in, as long as they are you they are best you. Eh? After everything, they will definitely be there. I'm saying this thing because 
first of all, I'm not. Different. I feel like the way they handle the first gives them like a guideline on how to handle the first. Yes, yeah. You understand? I've seen. I'm not just saying based on this is how I imagine. It. I think I've seen my happen. parents like react to things that are not even as there as this type of situation. And trust me, it wasn't good. In my house, we can't do happy like the way we have home. Mm. We can't just all sit down and talk about like life. Once the conversation is entering you, everybody's going to pass it. And in my house, you can be in your space for like four days. Nobody just nobody really cares. All you need to just do is come and how you meet. Let it be that you didn't have you eaten. Or we'll make it, we talk about common things like jokes. And stuff. I, said, I said talking, like as we mentioned, the fact that I had a and I told my sister. It's how the, the, there is this space. So it's not a matter of you need to go. I've already seen my parents in action. And because of that, majority of things my siblings do, most times they do in secret. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. But they may tell like me because I'm not one to judge. My parents are no go area. My sister right now, she is old enough to marry. But there is this fear that she'll have to bring the fact that she knows that she has to present this man as her own this person to marry. To show how deeply they rooted that fear because of similar experiences. So I'm, I know I know where my own is coming from. But you're just wrong with the child for your daddy. <laughs> just when I'm giving birth safety. Yeah. And after my taking your grandfather. <laughs> Can toss me to the bush, you can send me to your Just carry this child. Don't do them, don't tell your grandfather. They will not show them. They will not show the baby. Parents, no older parents are not trying to. Someone used to say two things that always reunite everyone has to be death and a newborn. And then, but then the thing about parents, one thing I've always known is like no no two kids get the same version of their parents. One, no no two kids get the same version of their parents. And then two, parents, your parents here. I feel like sometimes we are too hard on our parents. No, they are, they are also parents. They're just doing this. They are winging it. At the end of the day, like they nobody actually knows exactly. how to nobody parent. Nobody knows how to parent. I, I have an elder sister. So if my parents should decide to parent me the way they parented my sister, they might have been the worst parents to me. Yeah. So to them, yeah, every child is different. Being a parent, it's a learning experience. So it's a learning. So I feel like it's like when I have this experience with this child, I know okay, this is not how to deal with this one. Yeah. So it's like sometimes you have to give parents the grace. Like sometimes the way they treated this person is not the way they would treat this person. It's not the way like no no two kids in the same home will experience the same family. Like if I had a child at thirty, then I have another one at thirty five. I'm not the person I was at thirty. That's true. So the way I would be with that child I had at thirty mm -hmm. is going to be different because me I'm also growing. I'm a person. Mm -hmm. I'm evolving. I'm, I'm getting as I'm so yeah. it's like sometimes when I look at parents I feel like. Like we kids, we can be very hard on our parents, yeah. but then we have to give them the grace because they are also like Human they are, they are, and they are also learning. Nobody, there is nowhere you will never see. You went to see books on how to be a doctor, a lawyer, be a better, but you will never really see how to be a good parent. And sometimes the bulk of the work is left to the child because at the end of the day, you can do everything you yeah, want, exactly. and the child will still be useless. So it's, 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 it's sometimes like when I look at the way our parents treat us, I really appreciate. It. Yes, yeah, there are certain things that we can keep it with us. I, I, won't do it. I wouldn't do it. I won't touch him a long pitchfork. Yeah, so many things. And it's, it's really, really, it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like when you're, when you're younger, you won't appreciate it until you actually become yes. older. And you the fear of so many things. I feel like my parents gave us leniency. Because I have cousins, and I see, I used to, you know, when you're somebody like, why can't mommy and daddy do like this? Yeah. Where this person? Then you see the way. Those ones, yeah, it's like when I saw a home them. where kids don't go into their parents' room, like they don't enter there. Like when their parents are going, they lock their rooms and then they go. The kids are only allowed to the parlor, the kitchen, and their rooms. It was really odd for me because my parents don't lock their rooms. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't for any reason they don't they don't lock their rooms. Well, like, we have we have, have access, like we have access. Come. So it's like or maybe I see these ones that when they hear their father's horns, they, they run Money. upstairs. In my house, when my father haunts, he expects everybody to, to come downstairs down. and greet him. Yeah. If nobody should meet him at the door, it's no, going to be a problem. There's going out to date. If nobody, if you enter the house and he doesn't see anybody in the problem, nobody comes to welcome like, him, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. And I feel like the fact that you spoke about parents actually, you know, being humans is actually 
quite understandable for me because after that five years of experience that I continuously, you know, I'm going to school consciously because I'm reminded mm-hmm. of the past. Them. I resented them for a very long period of time because I never really, you know, took my time to actually call them. But after talking to them as a 15-year-old, talking to their parents, I actually spoke to them. Like, I was in tears. My mom actually cried. Mm-hmm. After that experience, I feel like my, my parents actually listened to me more now. And it's how I understood that they actually learned from their mistake was the experience from my younger sibling, yeah. my direct junior. He was also like he almost got into that space. Yeah. But I my dad actually stood up for him. It was my mom that was actually trying to come into that situation, like trying to for my dad. Like, funny enough, during my time, my dad was seriously against me. But he stunned my dad was because of his experience. Exactly. Yeah. And so the trauma I went to that age is like no this this my this my son is in the age where this my daughter passed through. But it's, it's just really sad when they know that they made this mistake and they keep making this mistake because they feel like they're right. No. Yeah, and it's, I, it's really really upsetting. I feel like one thing parents like if I could talk to every parent and tell them this is where you can do better. It yeah, has that's to be, the thing about like parents. Sometimes they should learn how they to say they don't sorry. they don't say sorry. That's good. They, that's the problem. They don't they, they, don't, they don't say sorry. They don't say sorry. One topic that was talking sorry. about in one of these therapy sessions is on why do Nigerian parents not say so? Sure. Let's talk about it. I feel like they feel like it's because their parents, they, are, they think they, they are expected to know. Because, like, now, it's my child. Right. There's something they used to say. No, nobody prepares you for how to deal with a child that is crypto. Nobody prepares you for how to deal with a child that, you know, is defiling social norms. Yeah. So, you don't, you like, it's different when, like, when your child gets pregnant, yeah, your first reaction it's like anger. I don't even I don't even think they will know their first reaction because you've never had a child that got pregnant. Disappointment, then anger. <laughs> that anger has to come. But then the ones that will linger. That's the funny thing. The surprise will go. Disappoint and the anger will go. The disappointment will linger. You know something. You know something I realized. Take it from boy and girl. If your parents really hear that your brother or their son is pregnant with somebody. The way they react, it's not going to be so it's devastating. It's different because yeah, the one of brother, the one carrying is not. The one that is not the one that is not. You know the way you know a good family is from the daughter. Yeah, mm-hmm. they mostly still. They don't yeah, it's from the daughter. It's not from the sons. sons. Always find their own way. Yeah. Sons will need their own life, but a daughter is person that carries the us in most times. That's so true. if their daughter does this, it's like a stain yeah. because no matter how much you forgive your daughter, I never want to have African friends that are very very close about their name, their family name. Mm. They don't want anything. Do you understand? Yeah. Because that name is the name that our children will carry. Their children's children will carry. It's like a legacy. And once you think, once you think, it, you and they hear, once they, they hear that, that name, yes. that is what people are going yeah. to associate it with. Like if, if like in Nigeria now, let's say your family, let's say your, one of your brothers decides he's gay. Mm. Now, whenever they hear your soul name, yeah. it's going to be attached to. That oh, that one! Man. You want your son to be? <laughs> <laughs> they, they automatically think it was in the blood, <laughs> so they forget. Even if your father was like a big philanthropist, if the, all of those things become null and void, what they remember is the family that brought forth, you know, the homosexual. Especially when you're not a family with high standards, uh, yeah. like you're a Christian it comes, family. It comes with a lot of, you know, expectations. expectations. So, anyways, from the thing that I will keep it by the grace of God, <laughs> she will keep it. You keep that anyway. <laughs> um, who so knows? Yeah. Maybe I'll tell you. Hey, don't worry. Where do you see yourself in five years? This is like the cliche question that everybody asks. I know who knows where you see myself. You don't have visions. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> no, like I'm saying, like this, is, like one of the first answers that comes to my mind was like, I don't even know because it's such a cliche yeah, question. Yeah, just like very big. Asking me, I, I, I know where I will, but don't ask me. <laughs> Anyways. Five years, that's where do I see myself? In a yacht, in Dubai, not in a tomb, though. But well, in, in, in a pyjama. <laughs> right now. Okay, where do I see myself in five years? Well, I see myself, first and foremost, with a lot of money. Huh. Like, lots Below of me, money. Yeah. money. Oh that is the most oh important. I see myself successful. Like, I see myself crushing all the goals I said I will crush. I've always been interested in the corporate world. I don't have interest in entrepreneurship and nonsense. Corporate uh-uh. like No, I'm not an entrepreneur. Why did you just anymore. call it nonsense? I said entrepreneurship and nonsense. Not entrepreneurship nonsense. What is nonsense? The other things. Other things are not nonsense because it's not academic. <laughs> well, because it's not interesting. So, yes, like, make money from that nonsense. So, I, see, I see myself in a particular place in the corporate world. And I see myself with money. 
lots of money. I see my soul. I see my <laughs> that's how you say five years. <laughs> but anyway, so even if it's cast, it's not going to be scarce in my bank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and I see myself I see myself happy. Really very happy very and healthy. Very, very important. And healthy. I and then to I see myself thriving. Mm-hmm. I see myself in love with a baby and the bigger baby that's going to have beards. But you know this that's that. Okay, I don't mind, but basically, I see myself in love. I see myself with a baby, a child, mm. and I see myself really in love with you know somebody's son. I see myself happy. I see myself stable. I see myself loved up. I see myself in money. Okay, that's it. Oh yeah, my god, I'll be one of my VP houses. Yeah, help me. My friends are help just picking moves. <laughs> And maybe with people, but I'm seeing myself on the bed right now, my drone, like, taking videos <laughs> from my video. Yeah. Money, 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 happiness, good health, and good relationships. Yeah, that's just it. Me, in five years' time, I see myself, like she said, extremely happy. Not my emotional ups and downs, happiness. Extremely happy. Fulfilled with life. Purposeful, like knowing that my life has purpose. Right now, I'm still trying to find purpose in life. Even that I'm not, I found at least I'm closer to my purpose in life. I see my channel booming because the girl is about to be influencer. So I see this channel growing places because I have it in my mind to work on this right now. That came in the night, the dedication for me. Okay, so give this video a thumbs up because I'm putting the effort in this channel. Putting in the work. Mm-hmm. So I see this channel. To so make the video her soulmate. Yeah. Yes. I, my video is my soulmate. Well, so I see this channel going places. I see myself going places. I see myself opening two businesses. So hmm. I have the intention of starting business. I see myself with my man that will be hiding wherever it is in any country or any earth or hmm. any planet. You don't need a man. I don't need it, but I, I, I like men. You don't need a man when you have me. You. So, Look at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm actually got money. No, for her, she's not. But I could, I could, you know, make adjustments for you. I Mama. don't want any adjustment. I want that is is adjusted already. She wants to I don't want to Yeah. I'll find See, I want to talk my own. Oh, my life. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you are epistemological. Me, continue. Seven so, like I was gone. saying, I see myself free. A man mm-hmm. that is my own. I'm not sure it's any man. First, now to me, mm-hmm. you get that is for me. I'm, I am for him. My roots over my roots and my bones. Sorry, I'm his roots of his feet. Yeah, you get the point. I do. So I see myself in good relationship with the people around me, new connections, new network. As well. I'm traveling spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and my bank account oh. is growing. That's why I see my health in five years. Happiness, joy, satisfaction, peace. Period. If you if you cut this part of the video, it's obvious you've been enjoying it. So do go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Share this video to anybody you think will be needing this, especially in person in medical school are going through it in life. Tell them that they are not alone. Come and watch this video and be happy that they are not alone. <laughs> Subscribe, turn on your post notification bell because this place is a good place to be. A lot of fun things. A lot of emotional deep things, a lot of encouraging self good things are happening in this channel. I don't want to miss it. So subscribe, turn your post notification bell because it's lit up in here. So I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Until then, adios. Bye. So the next question is Do you believe in soulmates? My love. I don't. I do. What is what are soulmates? You do you? You don't answer. I want to actually because I've always heard of soulmates, soulmates. Hmm? Okay. But I've never really taken time to study and know what soulmate is for me to know what I believe in. Okay. okay. I the person that believes in soulmates.